Hello everyone, welcome. I'm going to talk about how to trace network events in LTTNG. So let's get to it. Um, LTTNG has a certain number of events that are related to networking. So here's my script. Uh, I'm going to create the LTTNG session, LTTNG create, then I enable event. Uh, all the system calls now, this is not really necessary, but usually when you're doing network tracing, sometimes it's interesting to see the system calls that are related to creating a socket and sending or receiving on a socket. So I can either narrow down to those uh, or just um, trace all of the uh, system calls. So uh, one possible alternative here would be, for instance, to say system call and just look at open, for instance, open socket, connect, listen, select, pull, but the list is very long. So that's why I'm going to actually say all of them, right? But essentially, unless you're looking to investigate any blockings that happen as a result of networking, you don't really need to enable these, but I'm just gonna enable them for now. And then I always recommend that we have the scheduler events on and the interrupt because we know what's the context of uh, each CPU. And again, adding context to the events as well. And then finally, network related events which are net underline anything everything sock underline everything and NAPI poll s um, uh, poll and then skb underline everything so we're going to collect a trace for 10 seconds and see what we get what i'm going to say is lttng net and let's say network demo and before I do that, I'm going to do a uh, ping flood, ping dash F192, 168, 43.1. I'm just going to ping flood my gateway. And then I'm going to start this trace for 10 seconds. So we'll just wait. Okay, tracing done. Traces are collected and stored here. So I'm going to go, let me just stop the uh, ping flood. I didn't have to do a ping flood, to be honest. Um, here, trace compass. I have a project open. I'm just going to right click here. Import. Trace import. Next, select where the trace is. NLTTNG traces and network demo open. Select the experiment is here. Finish, rename all, and I have my experiment here. So these are the list of events. Uh, CPU usage is down here. I probably don't care about this here. And uh, the resources view, the statistics, and everything else. Okay. So if I go here and look at the interrupt. Uh, interrupts. I should be able to see interrupts related for networks. So you see that the soft RQ related to network RX receive, right? We have a lot of these interrupts happening. If I zoom out, you can see that there is a lot of activity here. Any place I zoom in, there's going to be a lots and lots of uh, ne network receive activity. And then here, these IRQs I know are related to my uh, Wi-Fi card. The reason I know is that if I do cat proc interrupt, uh, see uh, IWL Wi-Fi default queue. So from 185 up to 200. These are all for my Wi-Fi card. That's how I know. Um, so from 185 to 200, which is actually, oh, we, I only have these, 
I don't have all of them. Uh, so I have a lot of uh, interrupts arriving on my network card, right? So I see the interrupt here is triggered. I see the IRQ handler entry, the IRQ exit, the time difference between the, these two, which is 1.1 microseconds. And then it delegates to a soft IRQ, which takes 11 microseconds to finish. So from here, basically, three. So from this point to this point, it's about 19 microseconds, 20 microseconds for uh, software in, for, from the hardware interrupt until the software IRQ is handled. Okay. Uh, but let's look at the rest of the network events. The uh, so let's go here. If I want to see what's going on in this area, I can see that there is an uh, actually, yeah. There's an SKB consume here and I an API pull and then so on and so forth. So if I also want to filter for these events, these are all the network related events as well. So these are other network related events that happen in somewhere else. So I'm not going to really drill down into what each and every one of these events are because then I'll have to dissect the kernel stack, kernel implementation of TCP IP stack. And that's uh, something I don't intend to do in this video, but just to show you that um, these events are now telling me what's going on in terms of uh, the, the network events. I'm trying to, that's that's the intent here. Uh, so in this case, for instance, I have an, a soft IRQ raised on core number one, and then the soft IRQ is entered here. I enter the soft IRQ, and this is the new API. Um, this is an optimization in, in the kernel done where you actually uh, aggregate a bunch of packets and, and then process them through the stack all as one so that as to save CPU cycles, right? So basically that's receive entry and then exit and then network interface has received the SKP. This is basically when uh, the, this is usually layer two and this is when it, it hands it off to layer three. Um, and if we go forward again, SKB consume, uh, the SKB, the socket buffer is basically consumed or given away to the application. And then the network goes back into polling mode for more packets to see if there are more packets. In this case, there aren't any more packets and then it exits the soft IRQ. In this case, the soft IRQ took 23 0.7 microseconds to finish. So these were the network stack events. Now, let's say um, I want to know more detail about what's going on in, in the networking, but I don't have the event. LTTG really doesn't include all the events that you want, right? But let's say there is a function um, in the network um, code, and I want to trace that function. So it's a kernel function, right? Uh, now, I do know the name, but uh, maybe it's not a bad idea to show you. Well, okay, so let's go. And the Linux code here we have, it's a, it's a function called net rx action. Uh, now, I know that this function is called whenever a packet is to be received from the network card. So at the, this is the lowest level function that is called whenever a new packet arrives and an interrupt comes. This is the actual, this is part of the interrupts uh, handling routine, that are exaction. Okay. I want to know when this gets run. I want to trace this, but LTTNG does not include a trace point for this function. However, I can define um, a, a probe for this function and have LTTNG trace that probe. So LTTNG in theory can um, trace any kernel function. Okay. This is how I do it. So 
I would say LTTNG enable event dash K, meaning this is going to be a kernel event, and then say dash dash probe equals net Rx action, which is the function name. Okay. And then give it a name. So this is just a name that I give it, right? So it could be any name, but I just give it the same name. Or likewise, I could have said dash dash function equals net rx action, and then whatever name I want to give it. But I, you know, either one you can use. I just use this this other form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my session, enable event, the IRQs. Uh, well, actually, it probably wouldn't hurt if I enable the scheduler events as well. So I'm just going to say sketch switch and sketch wake waking and wake up and then the interrupts and the network related events and this new probe that i put okay so i'm gonna run this here so this one is basically i'm calling this k funk yeah kernel function k funk run this network let's say i'm just going to say net rx action okay and i'm also going to run my ping flood then run this and wait Okay, done so let this load this up right click import trace import next browse where the traces collected and stored open select this one the experiment is here finish rename all this is the guy okay so let's see net rx action did we catch anything yeah there you go net rx action and you see it's right before the the where the i said this is the the low level part where you know you actually aggregate a bunch of frames and you know process them through the stack it's right before that it's actually right before you enter the soft irq so as I said, it, this is, you know, if you look at the time, this is a, the exact same time, right? Uh, actually, not, not the exact, it, this is almost the same time, less than two microseconds apart. So essentially net RS action is, is run as part of the software interrupt service routine. Okay, let's see what we're looking at here in the network RX. Okay, so here we're handling the software IRQ. Here, this one. Software IRQ network receive, and then I run net RX action, and these are the arguments. This is just the uh, whatever. The uh, actually, uh, this is the instruction pointer. Sorry, it's not the argument. It's the instruction pointer for where this was uh, triggered. So this is the program counter. Basically, this is the address. Uh, hex address of the program in memory, which is going to be the kernel code. Okay, and uh, run as part of the IWL Wi-Fi uh, kernel thread. Okay, so then we do the receive entry, receive exit, and then layer three, uh, hand it over to layer three, and then uh, consume because it's handed off to to let's say the um, the the socket the layer four basically um, this kind of the the uh, the hard IRQ here I'm just trying to find it here this signals the boundary of physical arrival of packets to the network card right which um, you know which means that the DMA transfer and everything is going to happen this here the beginning of the software interrupt is the beginning of layer two process which starts with net rx action and net 
interface receive SKV is is layer three, and then SKV consume is basically in uh, I believe it's in layer four. Now I don't know if it's the, the bottom of layer four or the top of layer four, but we can check in the kernel code. So that was all. Uh, here's how you can uh, trace any function in the kernel with LTTNG. You just go and say, sorry, dash dash probe equal that function name and just give it some name that you like. And then, you know, you, you'll trace it. So if LTTNG does not happen to have the event that you're looking for or the, the place in the kernel that, that you're looking for, you can easily add it like that. And then you do your tracing. As you see, this is a very powerful tool and very versatile. I hope you like this video. In another video, I'll explain how you would trace disk events. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in my next videos.